Good morning. I feel like we're getting a little bit of an early start. Good morning. It's not quite 1030, which is unusual. Usually I'm dragging in about five minutes late going, oh my goodness, we got to go. But good morning, everyone. Good to see all of you here this morning. It's wonderful to see you. So let's go ahead and get announcements out of the way so that we can get into the worship service. So uh, first of all, does anybody have a visitor with them that they want to announce to to introduce? Because I see a few new people don't feel obligated to do that if it will be embarrassing. But, you know, some people don't want attention drawn to themselves. But I'm just like honing in on some new faces over in this area. Anybody want to say who you are? No? <laughs> okay. Well, we'll greet you afterwards. <laughs> Thanks for being here today. We're so excited to have some new faces in here. And um, that's great. So coming up today at, from 2 to 4, uh, Kate will be here with the youth group. So we are excited for the kiddos to come back and do that. And then Ask Them is this week uh, on Wednesday. And also we're going to get rolling on our uh, Christmas rehearsals for the choir in the very near future, the 23rd, October 23rd, Wednesday nights, 6.30 to 8. And um, Debbie's, we're going to, she said, despite the broken ribs, <laughs> is going to continue to lead us forward in that. Yes, Joe. Oh, no, ask him. That's right. It's fall break. We get a break this week from ask him. It's fall break. So <laughs> the next week, we had 27. Yes. I know. We, we had three kids because our um, paperwork did not get sent out from school. And we were like, what is going on? And the bus was super late. And no kids got on the bus except for Carmen who lives across the street and she was able to stay. So really we only had two kids that were going up. The next week we jumped up to 20, I think. And yeah. then this last Wednesday we had 27 children. 27 kids. but it was <laughs> but it was fun chaos and it was great to see that many kids so that was wonderful um, all right any other announcements all right very fine Debbie lead us into a spirit of worship would you and I'll find us a hymnal Debbie, and I'm glad you're doing better. Good morning, everybody. Morning. Welcome to church, and uh, welcome those who are following with us on our podcast. Thanks to Kathy. If you're able, please stand for a call to worship. The world belongs to God, the earth, and all its people. Love and faith come together. Justice and peace hold hands. If the Lord's people can be silent, the sounds of the shout aloud. Lord, open our mouths. And we shall proclaim your praise. Our hymn of praise is number 219, all the verses. <coughs>
display for our, our invocation. Lord, the trees are ablaze with your glory. The seasons change, but you never do. You are always beautiful in the green and freshness of spring, as in the golds and reds and chills of autumn. Make us like you. Let our lives reflect your beauty, season after season, as the calendars of our lives turn and turn and turn. The trees are letting go of this year's foliage. Help us to get go of both blessings and burdens and surrender, <clears throat> and surrender them both to your loving care. Fallen leaves pattern the ground with variety. So design our own fallings and failings into whatever design you, will please you most. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please be seated. Will the deacons please come forward? The Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Dr. Nichols, here's your stethoscope. Thank you, Nurse Nichols. Yes. We have all the things that we need. Oh, my goodness. We have a patient. Oh, no. Yes. Yes. This patient is, is very sick, but I better get back to script. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not where you are. Oh, those are glasses. Those are, okay, there we go. Okay, yes. Doctor, this patient is, is very sick. Oh, can oh, you get down here? No, yes, I'm going to have to. Okay. <laughs> Let me see. Oh my goodness. Yes. A, oh my. Yes, a temperature. Oh. 
And I don't see any hope in his eyes. Oh, no, no hope, no future. What oh. about worries? I think this looks like a oh, worried patient. He has plenty of those and, and no one to take them to. What a shame, oh. that's just a shame. Oh, Doc, this patient doesn't have it doesn't have any joy. No joy. Hmm. Oh, oh. Not good. Oh. Not good. What about his heart? Oh my goodness. Check his Let's heart. see his heart. Yeah, use your stethoscope. Yeah, that's yeah. a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I just got my medical degree about an hour ago. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let me take a look. Oh my. Oh no. What is it? What is it? There's no Jesus in there. Oh, oh gosh. No Jesus. No oh Jesus. my goodness. That is so bad, isn't it? No Jesus. But Look don't at that. lose hope. Look, no Jesus. No in there. Jesus. Oh we could gosh. give him a transfusion, though. Oh, what? I know. Do you mean? Yes, the life-saving medicine, the blood of Jesus. How'd you get that? <laughs> I hope he's ready. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> but I do hope he's ready to I see the good news, don't you? <laughs> I think he is. I'm, let's see. Let's, let's try give it. Let's him a try shot. it. We'll see what happens. Arm. Yep. There we yeah, go. Yeah, work on that. Maybe in the back too there a little bit. Okay. Get yeah. back over here. Mm -hmm. He's going to need two shots. Yeah. All right. He's there we very, go. He's very, very sick. I think it's working. Oh my goodness. Look. Yeah. Whoops. Uh oh. It is working. Look what it, look at his heart. Well, well, well. Oh. We, we, no, wait. We didn't do it. No, we didn't. But Jesus saved another one. Yes life-saving medicine that can only be found in the blood of Jesus. Jesus. That's right. Mm -hmm. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Yeah, we could say it that way. This little patient here, he's not <laughs> real, but but there are people out there that don't have Jesus in their heart. Isn't that sad? Because all they have to do is know that we know that sin separates us from God, right? But God had a plan and he sent Jesus and Jesus went to the cross, to the cross and took all of our sins, all of the bad and washed it away, didn't he? And made mm -hmm. us whole again. He lives again. He went to heaven which Kelly's been talking about, talking to about prepare heaven. a place for us, That's didn't he? Right. He did. So he's there right now, waiting for all of us. Isn't that exciting? Do you think that's exciting? Yes! Yeah, that is exciting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dr. Nichols, thank you for helping me. Thank you for involving me. Saving this me. patient. And for my medical degree, I can see anybody after church. <laughs> you know, I was telling Chet the copay is only $47. <laughs> All right, kiddos, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Are you ready? Dear God, dear God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus who saves us, who saves us, and loves us, and loves us. Help us to learn more. Help us to learn more about Jesus, about Jesus, and your Word, and your Word. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now listen. Walking feet down that hall and learn, listen and learn, okay? Listen and learn. Don't be a blister. Now, Kelly, are you going to be able to get up? No. Your sniffles may have to help you out. We're going to help each other. Can she get her up? that you all have this morning. Oh, and I, before we do that, I forgot to mention early on in announcements, we are taking up a love offering today. So if you didn't remember about that as we were taking the offering, um, you can give that money to who? Who should take it at the end? So give your money to me at the end and I will make sure, no, I'll make sure that it gets to the treasurer. How's that, Diane? Do you mind to help me with that? Seabrass, can we, if you see. Oh, I'm not the treasurer anymore. No, you're not. Who's the treasurer now? Well, are you talking financial 
the financial secretary is Patty. Yeah, Patty. Okay, so Patty yeah. will be the person to see after church. If you didn't get this in the offering tray, I'm sorry, I forgot to say something. But Donna McVeigh, who is a doctor, and she's many of your doctor, I think, and she is going to Tennessee for hurricane relief on October 20th. So if you have um, an offering you'd like to send, make it out to the church, and then we will send her with one um, offering to help support that mission trip and her work that she and her fiance are gonna do while they're there. So that's happening on October 20th. So we can take up the offering uh, today for that and we'll make sure that she gets that. So you can see me and I'll make sure Patty gets it as well. So, all right, thanks everybody. Now we can go to joys and concerns. Certainly our flood victims and hurricane victims across the Eastern coast, it's really been hit hard. Yes, hi Chris. And so there were others that didn't. So they still need prayers. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. So your house was fine. Your house in Florida was fine. Very good. Other joys and concerns? Hi, Linda. Yes. Hi. Um, I also want to thank your prayers for Florida. My sister was down there for her daughter who had the three surgeries. That's her. right. And thank God that their place was not, they had water to come up to the first step and that was it. Yeah. And some palm trees down. But around them, the houses are gone. And my niece is home. Yeah. She got to come home. The surgery, the doctors are, are overjoyed with how much she healed in that short of time. And her name's Teresa. Teresa Snyder. Glad she's home. Thank you, Linda. Other joys and concerns today? We continue to pray for Neil Hubbard, who we think is improving, and um, we hope that that trend continues. Any other joys and concerns today? All right, let's prepare our hearts to go to the Lord in prayer by singing our prayer hymn, Change My Heart, O God, page 654, or follow along on the screen. us in your image. We pray, Lord, that you would cleanse us and make us new. Remove uh, any of that old self that sometimes gets in the way of serving you. Help us, Lord, to just do your will and to live surrendered to you. We know, Lord, that you love us and we're so grateful for that. We're grateful for all of the joys that have been shared today in the midst of such tragedy and such uh, devastation along the eastern sea, uh, seaboard. Lord, especially our friends and families and our own homes that some of us have in Florida, that those were spared and that people are doing okay, that we love who are uh, in the wake of all of that. We pray, Lord, for first responders and those who are going to do relief and recovery work we pray that they will be uh, your instruments of peace and healing in a very troubled time. 
And Lord, we just thank you that Teresa is home and that she's doing better. And we're so grateful for that. Lord, we continue to lift up to you Neil Hubbard and ask that you would continue to heal him and bless him. And Lord, we continue to pray for our friends, uh, the family of Brad and Cheryl Liskey. Lord, that family needs to uh, feel your peace and your presence as they navigate their grief. And Lord, we just ask that you would uh, watch over Debbie as she heals. Thank you that she's here and um, I know she's probably in pain. So we ask that you would continue to watch over her and bring healing to her body. And Lord, we thank you for all of the ministry that she shares through her music with us. Lord, we're grateful for all the ways you touch our hearts. We pray that you continue to be with the youth group and youth leaders in all avenues of that, whether the youth group or ask them or Sunday school classes. Lord, we just pray that we will share the love of Jesus with all the young people you bring into our lives. We ask, Lord, that you would hear us now as together we pray the prayer Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> That's your cue to sit down right there. <laughs> uh, let's turn to Genesis chapter 2, just verses 7 and 8. And then we're going to jump over to the New Testament. And we're going to um, look at 2 Corinthians 5. So let's start with Genesis chapter 2. And I hope it's been helping that I wait to find these passages along with you, because I think some of you were saying, you're just, you jump in and start reading so fast, I don't have a time to find it. So I've been waiting to find it alongside of you. So that way, hopefully, we can read it together. So Genesis chapter 2, verses 7 and 8. Hear the word of the Lord. The Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. And now jump over with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and we're going to look at verses 6 through 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verses 6 through 8. Once again, hear the word of the Lord. Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. We live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. Thanks be to God for the reading of his word this morning. We've been talking about the real heaven. We've been doing this little mini-series leading us up into the time of Advent about what the Bible says about heaven, what's it really like, and what can we really know. And we're finding out that the Bible tells us more about heaven than what we may have thought originally. And I'm hopeful that all of us are using that concordance in the backs of our Bibles and looking up heaven and passages about heaven so that we're learning on our own as well when we're away from this place. 
But I have to always kind of start out with the, the, a little share story from my own life experiences. And one of the most frightening things that ever happened to me when I was a little kid was my mom's mother passed away. And they told us, because they didn't know a better way to explain death when we were little kids, they didn't know a better way than to say, she, it's, she has fallen asleep and she's not going to wake up. Well, they had no idea what that was going to do to my little three or four or five year old person. And so I could not go to sleep. And I was terrified to fall asleep. And I was terrified to sleep alone. So for the next several weeks, maybe even years, I slept in bed with my mom and dad. I was terrified to fall asleep. They couldn't they just couldn't think of a better way to tell us about death. Because how do you explain that to a little child anyway? Well, so, you know, and it's hard. It is really hard. If you have little children, you know how hard it is if you've lost somebody that you love. Well, maybe you've had just as traumatic an experience from your own childhood that you could relate about how death was explained to you or your experience of it when you were younger. And how do you figure this out? And so I never really even, so after I got over that, I never really thought about it much. I just didn't think about death. I sort of blocked it out just stopped thinking about it. Just dwell on living, not think about dying. And I didn't think about heaven necessarily, other than it's the place I wanted to go when this life was over. And so I didn't really think about it a whole lot again until my brother was diagnosed with stage four non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And so I didn't even want to think about it necessarily then because we were praying for his healing and I was very hopeful that God would just heal him and we wouldn't have to face his death. But as the disease progressed and he didn't get any better, we started dealing with the fact that we might lose him. And then he began little by little to accept the fact that he was probably going to die and began to talk about heaven and what it might be like. And his understanding of heaven was just as vague as mine at that time. But he knew that's the place that he would go because he had accepted Christ and he was, you know, confident, as Paul said, that he, God had him. And so um, we didn't think about it a whole lot. Then when he passed away, we did start to think about it a little bit more. But it really wasn't until recently, as I'm getting older, and then I had my little health scare, that I started thinking about it again, thinking what happens when we die? And where do we go? What is heaven really like? And what are we gonna do there? Has anybody ever started kind of thinking about it more as you get older or as you've had a health scare? Scott, did you start thinking more about it as you had your health scare? What, what's gonna happen if I die? You know, you probably worried about your family more than you worried about yourself at that point. <laughs> but you know, you start thinking about those things, don't you? When you get uh, thinking about that. And then if we lose the, pe the people closest to us that we love, we start to think about that. What happened? What happens to us, to our bodies, and, and what happens to our soul? And so I wanna spend some time talking about that today. What happens when we die? And what, is, what are we going to do in heaven? What does that look like? Where, where is heaven? And what, what are we going to do with heaven? And so scholars are calling this time that was, we read Genesis where we talked about the intended heaven was that the Garden of Eden would just be forever and that God was going to live with us and walk with us and dwell with us there in the Garden of Eden. But then sin entered, and so there had to be this uh, this whole plan of salvation and redemption for God's people and how was this going to all look. And then this new heaven and new earth that we read about in Revelation. So scholars, you're not going to read this in your Bible. It's not as in scriptures written this way. But scholars call this time in between an intermediate, the time in heaven, intermediate heaven. Now, so you may have heard it, uh, others have explained it as purgatory. That's a whole different ballgame than what uh, the Bible talks about as that time before the new heaven and new earth and what scholars call the intermediate heaven or what's happening before we get our glorified bodies and the new heaven and new earth appear. So that's what they're calling it um, is intermediate heaven. That's what's happening uh, in the now, right now, where your, body, where your soul will go when you pass away. So the author of our book, Chip uh, Ingram, who wrote the book, The Real Heaven, was asked by someone who was terminally ill, 
what does the Bible say when the moment we die is going to happen to me? What's going to happen to me? I really want to know. And so he began to study to give an educated answer to this parishioner who had asked him this question. So Chip started, this, um, started to, to understand more about the, what the Bible said, and he looked at and refers to Luke 16, 22, which says, The time came when the beggar, whose name was Lazarus, when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. So he's talking about the parable Jesus told of the rich man and Lazarus. And so he says, while the point of Jesus' story was not a teaching on heaven, we learn something about what's going to happen to us when we, from this story. It says the angels carried the poor man into heaven or to, to Abraham's side, which in that culture was the place of reward. So he said, so I'm going to glean from this story that when we pass away, we immediately, our soul is released and we go into the presence of God, ushered there by angels. He said, we can infer that from reading this parable um, that Jesus told about the rich man and Lazarus. He also, story, he also shared a story about some missionaries, Jim Elliott and Nate Saint, who were reaching out to the Auka Indians in South America. Don't know if I'm saying these names correctly. And they were making some strides to build a relationship with these, tri uh, these tribes, and they were bringing them medicine, and they were working uh, to help uh, with those people, building relationships so that they could share the gospel with them. And about that time that they thought they were making a real inroad into this um, ministry, they were attacked by some marauders um, that were war warriors, and they were martyred. They were all murdered. And so their wives decided not to let their uh, work end, and they decided to continue that work. And so miraculously, they began to make strides, and some of those, uh, I can't say the word, but some of those uh, warriors who were present and part of murdering those missionaries were converted to Christianity and came to those women and shared a story that said, on the day we murdered your husbands, um, we heard singing in the trees. And we looked, and there were people dressed in glowing white who were carrying their bodies to the sky. And so they had seen, and I think that, you know, God used that moment um, in those people's lives to give them an insight into something that was coming. And so, and it really helped with their conversion experience. And there was redemption there and there was forgiveness there in those moments when they came together. The great golfer Paul Azinger, who may be the person we were trying to read about this morning um, in our other Sunday school lesson, was told that he had life-threatening cancer at the height of his professional career. The chaplain of the golf tour told him, we think that we are in the land of the living, going to the land of the dying, when in reality, we are in the land of the dying, going to the land of the living. And I thought that was super insightful um, of that chaplain. And Paul says, therefore, we read this passage, therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we're away from the Lord. For we live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. At the moment that we take our final breath, we are immediately in the presence of Christ. On this side of heaven, when we experience the death of a loved one, as I mentioned my brother earlier, or a dear friend, we, of course, feel the sting of that loss. And we grieve because we are separated in this lifetime and we are filled with pain and sorrow because of that separation from that person that we love. We don't often think, especially in that moment of loss when we are grieving, we don't often think about the other side. 
what that person is experiencing. We don't often think about the other side of this life, the side from heaven. But on that other side, our loved one is experiencing a homecoming. They are being welcomed by Jesus himself. They are being ushered into the presence of God where they can sing his praises and give thanks for all that God has done for them. God is welcoming that person and they are being reunited with all the saints who have gone before. It's a day of joy and celebration for them. While the Bible reveals many things to us about the question of what will happen when we die, there are so many pieces of it that we won't understand until we actually get there. Reflecting once again on the story from Luke 16 of the rich man and Lazarus, we learn that we are conscious and in command of our faculties of thought, feelings, speech, and memories. People are able to have conversations with one another and know and recognize others. The reason is because it's not our body that gives us our personality or our character or our traits, but rather it is our soul that makes us who we are. Revelation 4, 1 through 6 tells us that we will gather around the throne of God and Christ in worship. As a matter of fact, right now, while we are here in this earthly worship service, there are thousands and thousands of souls who are participating in worship of Almighty God as they stand around his throne in heaven. You have people there, I have people there, who right now are worshiping God with us in heaven. They worship the God, and the focus will be on the God who was and is and is to come. And when they saw him, John says that uh, when they saw him, when he was uh, swept up in this revelation, when he saw Jesus, it was like a lamb who had been slain. And he says that the 24 elders, I was wrong, I said 12 this morning, and the 24 elders and the creatures surrounding the throne fell down in worship and began to sing. I love a song by Mercy Me called I Can Only Imagine. And in the chorus of that song, they sing, Will I stand in your presence or to my feet will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. In all honesty, I think that in the moment that we see Jesus face to face and come into a full understanding of what he has done for us and we see him in his holiness and in his glory, we'll probably fall at his feet. Here's what um, our author of our study says. Uh, he writes this. He says, when we get to heaven, we will have an acute understanding of what our salvation has cost and that will make our worship that much richer. We will sometimes see angels engaged in worship. That's part of their role and purpose. But there is one huge difference between our worship and the angels' worship. We understand grace and redemption in a way that they never can. We know what it is to be desperately broken and then to be pursued by God. Sorry. We know what it is like to have Jesus love us enough to die for our sin. We know what it is to sing the words, once I was lost, but now I'm found. I made the mistake of looking at Linda who got choked up and I got choked up. I said, you guys can't choke up <laughs> if I'm gonna be, if I see you, then I'm gonna go. <gasps> Chapter six of Revelation verses nine through 11 tells us that some of those saints who have been martyred will ask God how long until he avenges their blood. They are going to be looking down at the inhabitants on the earth at that time. And so we glean from that, Chip says, that there is an awareness of people on the earth, that there is an awareness of what's happening down here. Now, I don't know, and it doesn't tell us this, and I don't know, we probably won't know till we get there if it means that we're going to go see, we'll be in heaven, we'll get to see our grandkids playing that championship ball game or not. But we know that there is some kind of an awareness of what is happening here. 
but the rest remains a mystery, and that's just all there is to it. Chip says, and I agree with him, that we will recognize and communicate with other believers in heaven. We will know our family Will we recognize those giants of the faith. And he, return, and he bases that on the story of Jesus in the transfiguration on the mountain from Luke chapter 9, verses 28 to 36, where Moses and Elijah, who lived hundreds and hundreds of years apart and hundreds and hundreds of years apart from Jesus and the disciples, and yet they knew who they were. He says, we'll recognize them. We'll recognize one another. So let me do a quick summary to wrap up the study for today. The Bible tells us these truths about when we die and what heaven will be like. First of all, we learn that we immediately go into the presence of God when we die. Secondly, we will worship God and Christ along with all of the other saints who have gone before us. Third, we will be conscious and aware of what is happening. Fourth, we will be fully alive and fully ourselves. We just won't have our glorified body yet. Fifth, we will be somewhat aware of what's happening on the earth. And finally, we will recognize and be reunited with those who preceded us into heaven. Next week, we're going to talk about human history, how it will end, and um, about that developing of the new heaven and the new earth. So we're closing in on the end of the study of what the, the real heaven is really like. Amen. If there's anybody here this morning who would like to make a confession of faith or if you would like to join this fellowship of believers, we invite you to come forward and join this church and make your confession as we stand together and sing Glory to His Name, verses 1, 2, and 4, page 493. loving God, thank you for this day and for this time to come together to worship. We pray, Lord, that as we take up an offering today for those who are uh, doing some work for hurricane relief, that you'll bless them and bless our gifts as they go um, to offer some relief for those who are hurting. We pray, Lord, that you'd help us to go from this place with your peace and with your love tucked away in our heart, that we might follow you every day this week in joy. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Go in peace. Happy birthday. Oh, one, day <laughs> one day early. <laughs> Can I get some help? <laughs> Happy birthday.